Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, one more thing we can add to our skin is subsurface scattering. Uh, to be able to do that, uh, you need to turn on uh, the subsurface scattering channel here in the texture set settings. Uh, hit the plus button and choose uh, scattering. Okay. And to really see the scattering, you also have to go to the display properties or display settings here and you also check on the uh, activate subsurface scattering okay. uh, and you can crank up the sample count to get better quality you can see subsurface scattering happening okay now for now our model feels like a balloon okay because uh, the scattering is too strong to fix that we need to define uh, our own subsurface scattering with a new fill layer i'm going to call this guy sss base okay and then uh, I don't need to define color, head, roughness, metallic, uh, or no more. You can see we have one more channel called scatter. Uh, this channel is zero for now. I'm going to change that to something like, uh, I don't know, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, maybe. Uh, to be really able to judge if that's correct or not, we can go to the display settings and back here to the shadow part. Uh, well, let's make the shadow really, shadow really strong. Okay, that when we rotate the lights, you can see, uh, you can see the transition, and this transition is basically giving you a good idea on how the subsurface scattering works or how much it is, uh, how much effect it's having. Okay, so your goal is making it sort of like visible. You can see a transition from the lighted part to the shadow, and there is like a red transition. Now this transition should be still visible, but uh, to the minimum. So uh, it's not going to be super strong, especially for like a male character like this. I'm going to change that to something even smaller, at 0.03 instead of 4. Okay, so you can still feel feel it. It's just not going to be that visible. All right. Now also, subsurface scattering shouldn't be the same for different area of the face. Okay. Uh, so what we can do is we can make the ear and maybe the the lips and the eyelid and maybe the tip of the nose because those areas doesn't have a lot of bone around them so the light sh could be traveled further inside but again uh, i think this is fine for our character but for a female character if you want to make it feels like smoother uh you can have have a little bit more so i'm gonna go create another layer here i'm gonna call this guy sss scene the thin layers and for the thin layers i'm gonna go change the scatter to something quite high and give the black mask and then give it a paint layer okay let me turn off the visibility of the intersection here okay and i'm gonna paint around the eyelid the nose uh, the lip and the ear. Okay. Maybe not all the way in, maybe just uh, the outside half. Because uh, after that, I wanted to actually go blur it. So add a, a filter and then change it to blur. I can blur these scattering. I hit C button to take a look at that. You can see those are the areas I kind of wanted to have some more subset scattering. Okay. Okay, for the ears, let me add a new, oops, a new paint. Okay. And this time I can make my brush a little bit softer. And then just carefully add some scattering back. Maybe I'll lower down the intensity. I can try this smear thing to smear them a little bit to, to blur it basically. All right, cool. So now I can go back to the material. You can see the surface surface scattering is happening on those particular areas that I want to have a little bit more, but I don't want them to be that strong either. So back here to the surface scattering, I'm gonna drag that uh, slide it down. I will use that. I, 
I put that to one just to be able to visualize uh, the areas that I have defined. But now I need to really lower them down. It shouldn't be that much bigger uh, than the bottom ones. The bottom one is like 0 0.03, the top one is like 0 0.1. That should be enough. Okay. Uh, if you really want the year to have more scatter, you can try to paint more, but that should be taken care of if you have the bad backlight. Okay. And here it's not exactly going to be transferable to the renderer, so I just you want to preview and see the subsurface scattering. Mm -hmm. Those masks those masks can be actually the, the primary tool I use uh, in the renderer uh, to compose my correct values for my subsurface scattering. Okay. All right, cool. And then we can finally do some tweaking to the shadow to bring it back to not super dark. Okay. And while we're at it, to just get some good uh, final rendering results, I could, uh, let me see, let me rotate the angle a little bit. I could start tweaking the display uh, settings here. So let me drag it out and here hit tab button to maximize my viewport. Hit F1 or F2 actually to show just the 3D viewport. Okay, you can go to the rendering uh, dis uh, the, the display settings. Okay, and then we can activate the post processing or post effect. And then we can go to the color correction, turn it on, and we can change the uh, contrast to have a little bit more contrast. 1.02 maybe, maybe even 0 0.1. I don't want it to be that much contrast. Okay, uh, lower down the saturation a little bit, and maybe, oh, that's too much of a bias. Maybe we can change the brightness to make it just a little bit brighter. And then we can turn on the vignette to make it stronger. Okay, so have some vignette in the middle, uh, in, on the edge. And we can change the temporary anti-lacing, uh, crank up the scattering quality. Okay. So yeah, that's going to give us a better preview on what's going on. Uh, alternatively, here, if you want to get some very dramatic kind of like results, you can activate the color profile, and there's a bunch of different profiles, okay, like uh, uh, the orange and blue one, which gives you this really sharp contrast, so making the highlight to be more orangish, and the color, the, the backside or the dark area to be more blue, okay, to give you this dramatic like. Uh, almost like an old photo kind of like a result. You can drag the white point to determine uh, the change of the color, uh, I mean the, the contrast or where the mid value is, I guess. I'll change that back to one. Or you can try other different profiles. Film, camera with uh, one, two, eight, gamma. Scale right to check the grid. Uh, this is actually a, a very good view viewing mode. You can use this to check uh, your actual grid scale variation. Uh, it's gonna give you a better sense of how does it looks like without color. Okay, because which is uh, actually a pre pretty important thing when you're doing like a texturing for uh, an asset that has a lot of different components. You want to be able to check the values and see if those has a proper distribution. Okay. Um, Panelog. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of really interesting uh, uh, profiles you can check and see, uh, you know, what kind of kind of like a difference they're making. All right, cool. So this should conclude everything I want to talk about um, with the skin texturing. Although um, Substance Painter is not going to be the final rendering pack package. So eventually those has to go to somewhere like Unreal Render or Unreal Engine. Okay, that's some other topic we can talk about later. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching. See you next time.